our taxes are going back to operation. We are calling off the stairway. What we will do is to ensure that we go back to the task team. We apologize to the public for the distress and the inconvenience that the stairway has caused. Roads are blocked, passengers stranded, drivers furious. Another arrest is made while a bus is on fire. In the distance and on social media, shots fired. Another stone is thrown. A child in your Facebook feed is bleeding, but the hospital is closed. These are just some of 2023's most horrific scenes due to a taxi strike in Cape Town. It's nothing new, not for Cape Town, nor South Africa. How did a stay-away strike result in so much chaos? And will the violence ever end? This story has a lot of finger pointing. At the forefront, the city of Cape Town, Santaco, and the taxis, not to mention the victims. South Africans often complain about the lawlessness of taxis. No problem. Huh? Red lights have become optional. Reckless driving is common. David, go back. And while all of this is true, one can't deny that taxis form a vital part of South Africa's ecosystem. It empowers the economy at large. More than 960,000 people are directly or indirectly employed because of taxis. This impacts society. With more than 250,000 taxis on the roads, millions of South Africans rely on it every day to get to school, work, a hospital, or just for fun. Looking at the stats, you cannot argue the number one form of transport in South Africa is the humble taxi minibus. The numbers are staggering, and it shows South Africa simply can't function without taxis. So, what are the stats? Daily minibus taxi trips far exceed those on trains and buses. Taxi ranks also top the charts in the number of ranks versus stations. The taxi industry obliterates distances traveled. For the owners, it's an entrepreneurial powerhouse. Annually, it's a 90 billion rand industry. For the workers, it's a 16 to 18 hour workday. Rain or shine, they travel all of South Africa to ensure the passengers can get from A to B on time. It's a system that's reliable and it works until it doesn't. I drive like seven, seven days a week. I start like 5.30 in the mornings and I'm finished at night at 6.30. Sometimes I earn nothing for the day. You know how it goes, struggle. This is the first sneak peek the public got of the strike. Minibuses block exit routes from the rank. And then, shots, tear gas, stun grenades, and arrests. It was just the beginning. Maybe if that video didn't go viral, all of this tragedy could have been avoided. An inconvenience without the violence. But it spread like wildfire and revenge followed. The city of Cape Town impounded 15 taxis that day. The charge? Violation of the National Land Transport Act. Meaning, a vehicle can be impounded if the driver is without or contrary to the conditions of their operating licenses. What has come to light are the amended bylaws, officially implemented by the city of Cape Town at the end of July 2023. These laws were designed to combat insolence and carnage on the roads. A vehicle can now be impounded if it has been illegally modified, has defective lights, there are missing number plates, not roadworthy, or part of illegal street racing, drifting, or spinning. Here comes the confusion, the miscommunication, and the misunderstanding. The difference 
and what is complicated life for everybody in Cape Town is that they are not following the regulations from the National Land Transport Act. They are imposing their own. Were these taxis impounded because of a national law or a bylaw? I would like to state unequivocally and without any way that someone can misunderstand me, not one public transport vehicle, whether it be minibus taxi, e-hailing service like Bolt or Uber, or a metered taxi, has been impounded according to the bylaw. However, the bylaw dialogue continued. My understanding is that this bylaw that has gotten both yourselves and the taxi Sorry, sir, so I have to interrupt you. I'm so sorry to do this, but I have explained to News from Africa and just a minute ago to you, sir, that none of this has anything to do with the bylaw. Bylaws, bylaws. Bylaws, bylaw. Bylaws. Why does it seem as if you are all speaking over each other? To, to, to that, uh, J.P. Smith, you are not the law. You must apply the law as law. He's not a goddess of South Africa. I don't want to talk with uh, J.P. Smith. I, I think the guy needs a, a serious psychological help. The city of Cape Town denies that they're impounding uh, taxis uh, in terms of the bylaw, but in terms of national legislation. So we, we, the court still has to determine the constitutionality of that. One can argue that the timing of these bylaws and the impounds is a bit of a coincidence. Or perhaps it's just too close for comfort. The city of Cape Town stands firm. They are doing their jobs, keeping the roads safe and clamping down outstanding warrants. Then there are the taxi operators who are fed up, feeling ill-treated and marginalized. This whole thing comes across as a screaming match, Hayiko Ubuntu, between the taxis and the government. Yes, taxis have historically been demonized. It matters where the problem started. And we promise we'll get to that in a minute. Here's what's rattling the discussion right now. Fines versus impounds. We are saying, firstly, they should not be targeted. They should be treated like everybody else on our road. If you have broken the law, you must be issued with a fine not in, get your car impounded yeah. for such minor offences. So, so the argument is that those fines don't work. They've been, they've been no, come on. Back to, if, they if keep you... offending and keep offending. And so we, we, there needs to be a point where rule of law is brought into, I, into effect. Some might say the solution is as simple as obeying the law. But everyone agrees, respect. There's a major lack of it across the board and on the road. By law or national law, the cycle of conflict is infinite. It's a narrative driven by power, by the need for control, with the violent ending that's just a placeholder for another beginning. Whether it's an impound dispute, a clash between Uber and taxi drivers, or a root war between rival associations. Money Hitmen, bloodshed. South Africa's problem with taxis is ancient. The industry was born into violence during the 60s. It emerged at the time of pass laws, forced removals, and answer to a basic human need to move around. Taxis were considered illegal and not recognized by the Department of Transport. It's thanks to a loophole in the Road Transportation Act that some minibuses could operate with a road carrier permit. They just had to leave one seat of a 10-seater empty. Deregulation of the industry came in 1987, and it happened rapidly. Why? The old regime had a nasty political strategy up its sleeve. Destabilization. How? Permits were issued like confetti. This led to the rise of taxi associations which led to the spread of violence. They got played. The hunger for power and money was insatiable. The commercial competition of lucrative routes between rival organizations showed no mercy. It claimed 
thousands of lives and caused widespread damage. The taxi industry has come a long way since. In the face of political and socio-economic conditions, it showed resilience. As a matter of fact, it should be celebrated. It is one of the first major business sectors to be developed and run by black entrepreneurs. And the people who work at are very industrious. They're great entrepreneurs. These guys worked out a cost per kilometer to run on a taxi that they didn't manufacture. It's made somewhere in China. They worked out the cost per kilometer to run the taxi, maintain the taxi, put new tires on it. They, they worked it out. Then they worked out how to price it optimally in a route so that the customer can afford to move from home to where they were going. And then they worked out how to disseminate route amongst each other so each of them underneath it can have sustainable businesses. I'm sorry, these guys are geniuses. To this day, the industry is still not formal or official. And even though drivers cause the road rage of many, they still pull on the short end of the stick with no unemployment fund or pension. Violence is the only guarantee. Between the taxi bus industry and the Western Cape, there's a cul-de-sac and the problem is everyone's. We should engage each other and throw less stones in the streets and social media. There's an unwanted belief, one that is ingrained and written with blood throughout history, not just South Africa. Violence brings order when nothing else works.